I must say I'm still excited by your constant presence, especially in this uh, meeting conducted in English by Prime Radio. We have moved quite a long distance and we thank God for this providence that we can at least share the word of God using the radio and using all these uh, uh, online and internet facilities. We pray to God that such a kind of opportunities will continue to work for us as we share because it is one of the critical things that we are supposed to do, sharing the word of God and bringing people back to God and making sure that people move and work and connect with God as we get to the close of this world. Brothers and sisters who are watching and those of you who are listening, I must say that this theme of I will go as a faithful steward has blessed me very much and I'm sure it has blessed you as well. Right now, as we continue with our series, I want us to get into a place where we look at something very critical. As we go, we are actually going to make a trip. But what type of trip are we going to make? We are going to look at a topic called empty trip. Empty trip. Let us pray as we discuss that from scripture. God our Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, we adore you, O oh Lord, because you are mighty, you are everything to us. You created us, you love us, you saved us. And so we belong to you. We thank you for loving us that much. Help us to understand your will in this world. And especially, let us pick the most critical spiritual lessons that we are supposed to pick. Help us to keep with you especially in your hands, serving you, listening to you, enjoying your presence, and being hopeful in the second coming of Jesus. Blessed be your name, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This very interesting topic, dear listener and dear viewer, is empty trip. How empty is this trip? When you check Mark chapter 6, verse 49 up to 52, there is a very interesting story. After Jesus Christ fed the 5,000, he went to dismiss them, but then he told his disciples to get into the boat and leave. Verse 45 says, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. I want you to follow exactly what the Bible is saying. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowd, after leaving them, he went up on a mountain to pray. This is disastrous. This is the source of the problem. Jesus told his disciples to get into the boat. And they got into the boat and left. While he remained behind, dismissing the crowd. Even after dismissing the crowd, Jesus did not join them. He went to the mountain to pray. In other words, the board left without Jesus. That is where the problem is. That's where the problem was. Sometimes it is not the problems we have. But what is in our boat? Jesus is left dismissing the crowd. Then after that, Jesus 
goes to the mountain to pray, but the boat has left. In other words, the boat left without Jesus. The boat was just empty. Because what is in the boat if Jesus Christ is not in the boat? How much is in your house if Christ is not there? How much is in your church if Christ is not in that church? How much is in your heart if Christ is not in that heart? I mean, how much? The answer is, the heart is empty. That boat is empty. That family is empty. That church is empty. That, I mean, we, and we have so many of such cases where you run life without Christ. Where you begin to move, but you have left him behind. And, and as we plan, say, I will go as a faithful steward. Please, when you are going, don't leave him behind. Because if you leave him behind, you are going to take an empty trip. And you'll be just in an empty boat. And I want to assure you, empty boats do not cross. An empty boat cannot cross. The problem is not the wind. The problem is not the problems you have. The challenges you have is not even lack of money. No. The problem is the boat is empty. When you check families, you'll be amazed. You may think so and so is the problem. So and so is the problem. No, that's not the problem. The problem is that Jesus Christ is not there. And so the family is empty. When your heart is empty, you are going to have tremors, you'll have winds, you'll have everything. Not because those things are there, but because Christ is not there. And so the boat was empty minus Jesus. Everything else is empty if Christ is not there. And so, brothers, I'm trying to suggest to you that once you plan a trip, don't leave Christ behind. And so these guys went. But verse 47 is very interesting. It says, That night the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on land. The boat left. Christ is not there. The guys are in the middle of the lake. I don't know what happens to things when they get in the middle. Something seems to take place when you get into the middle of something. You start your spiritual journey very well. You start your marriage very well. But when you get in the middle, things seem to hit you back and forth. You start your spiritual life, but when you get into the middle, things begin to hit you back and forth. I don't know what's wrong with the middle. As soon as they got into the middle, things started collecting against them. Check this. The Bible says, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. Verse 48. He saw the disciples straining at the oars. The disciples are straining at the oars. Because the wind was against them. Wind was against the boat. Shortly before dawn, before we get there, these people are struggling against the oars. In the middle, there are oars. In the middle, there are winds. If you can cross the middle, you can be sure of getting your destination. But when you get in the middle, then winds begin to blow against you. When you get into the middle, everything begins to work against you. Why? Because the boat is empty. The wind is always there. The oars are always there. But if the boat has no spiritual weight to keep it afloat, that 
will be a problem. It, they needed Jesus to be in the boat because it is only Jesus Christ who can provide the spiritual weight, the weight that the boat needs to stabilize. It's only the presence of Jesus in the boat that is required to bring calm. When these people started fighting the wind, I mean, I want you to see how much is in their lives. When these people started checking and started fighting the wind, there is a lot that is going on. They have fear of death because then water has started getting into the boat. You see, brothers and sisters, for the boat to travel, it needs water. But it's only safe if the water is outside the boat. But once the water begins to change its position into the boat, then life is threatened because water is not supposed to be in the boat. But the boat is supposed to be on water. The water that makes the boat sink is not the water around the boat. The water that makes the boat sink is the water that gets into the boat. Today, when you check things, the way they move, the world is full of things. The world cannot work by itself. You have all this and that, all this and that. There are so many habits that are hitting the society and many, many other things, bad things. And we are in the church. We are a church in the world. Now, what will spoil the church is not these bad habits, this moral decadence in, in, the, in the society. What will spoil the church is that which will get into the church. Once you allow things to begin getting into the church, then you'll have no church because the water that makes the sink, I mean the boat sink, is that water which gets into the inside. Today, we have a lot of things that are coming. Many of the, of the things are quite detestable. We have bad news. Things are coming. But if we allow them to get into the church, and then we are not going to have the church anymore. They can stay out. They can stay out. All those things you see, I don't want to mention them, there are too many. But all those bad things you see <coughs> are just one part of life that can devastate our boats. And so, don't allow any bad habit to get into the church because then it will make that church sink. This water... First of all, the wind is blowing, allowing water to get into the boat. That brings fear. The Bible says it was already dark. Darkness is also feared. You can tell what is happening. People are just threatened to, lo to lose their life just because of that boat. The wind is hitting back and forth, hitting back and forth. Everything is hitting back and forth. Everybody who is in the, in the, in the boat has life. His life is threatened. And so, brothers and sisters, it was not just a walk in the park. It was difficult for them to... They are losing hope. And so, because they left him behind, it's because they left him. There is no reason for this other reason for this, when you leave him behind, things cannot stabilize. When you leave him behind, families can never stabilize. When you leave him behind, journeys will never be stable. When you leave him behind, businesses will not run stably. When, I mean, institutions will not move according to the mission if he's left behind. And so I am warning you, I'm trying to speak to you at this moment, that when you are taking any journey, any trip, please make sure you are with him. 
Somebody said, is, is, is Jesus not the one who told them to get into the boat? Yes, but you are expected to be intelligent enough to know your strength. I want to give you an example of Moses when God spoke to him. Exodus chapter 33, verse 3, verse 15 to verse 17. Check those verses and see how Moses handled a, 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 a situation like that. Number uh, chapter 33. God spoke to Moses. He said, go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. God canceled his ticket that day. That is God. Let me read it again so that you understand. God spoke to Moses. He said, verse 3, Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. He's telling Moses to go with the Israelites. But I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. Verse 15, God, I mean Moses responded. Then Moses said to him, to the Lord, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. In other words, if you are not going with us, Lord, please, we are not leaving this place. Why? How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? Your presence is critical in our movements. In all our journeys we take, your presence is there. We cannot make it by ourselves without you. Moses is, is not welcoming the suggestion God is bringing. The Lord is making. No, not with Moses. Yes, the disciples accepted to go, but not with Moses. Moses said, no, you can't. We cannot go. We cannot make it by our own. Then he gives another reason. What else? What else will distinguish us or your people from all other people on the face of the earth? What? If your presence is not with us, brothers and sisters, if your presence is not with us, we have nothing that distinguishes us from the rest of the people. It is the presence of the Lord in us, with us, that makes a difference, distinguishes us from other beings, distinguishes us from other uh, groups. It distinguishes, it makes a difference between believers and non-believers. The presence of God is critical. You cannot make it without the presence of God. Moses said, no, God, we are, we are not going anywhere without you. We can't make it. Lord, we cannot and we will not. We are not going anywhere. Moses refused. And then the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. I have never seen something like this. Moses was one of the blessed people because he used to speak to God and God heard him and then God responded. How I wish I had the same thing, the same opportunity. God suggests something, the Lord suggests something, and Moses says no. If you are not going with us, we are not going anywhere. What, what is life like? What's the meaning of life without your presence? How do we make it? How can you do a journey without God? How are you going to even run your business without God? How is the church con going to continue existing without God? I mean, Moses is saying, God, what you are suggesting is impossible, and I'm voting it down. Moses voted it down and made God to accept. God said, now I have understood, I know 
And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked me because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. I, I like the phrase, I'm pleased with you. God, when God is pleased with you, you can even speak something. As long as you are speaking sense, God will take it. As long as you are speaking in a sensible manner, God will have it. Like I have spoken to you before in the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus took a sensible step and changed the itinerary of Jesus Christ. Diverted him to his home. Don't just accept things. Learn to reason spiritually. Know your strengths and weaknesses. If your connection with God is good, you have reason to reason. And so things started to work out. This these disciples ought to have, I would suggest, they ought to have acted like Moses. Don't take any trip without him. Because then you have no life. Don't take any trip without him. Because it is him who gives you the necessary direction. The necessary uh, coordinates. The necessary uh, compass. He's the one who knows the wind. And the wind know him. He's the one who knows the water and the water knows him. So don't just take risks of taking an empty trip. Empty trips cannot help you. Your boat will never cross with an empty an empty uh, an empty boat. But praise God, when they were struggling with the oars and the wind, the Bible says he was shortly before dawn he went out to them walking on the lake. Praise God, Jesus Christ is powerful. He can walk on the lake. You see, for you, if you're on land, remember Christ was on land and is now joining his group in the sea, on the lake, for you to, to move from land and start traveling on water, you will need to change the means of transport, but not with Jesus. He will walk on land and walk on water. That's how powerful he is. He will not change his means of transport. When he wants to go to heaven, for you to travel in air, you need a plane. But not with Jesus. When he wants to go up, he just moves up and he goes. That's how powerful the God we worship is. So as faithful stewards, we need to know the God we worship. Jesus walked on land and walked on water when he was going for this rescue mission to save his people who were drowning in, in the boat. And so he was about to pass, the Bible says, walking. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. These are disciples who have left him behind. When he's coming to rescue them, they think he is a ghost. Now, if the disciples can call Jesus Christ a ghost, <laughs> that's what happens when you leave him behind. Even when he comes, you don't understand he has come. And so, brothers and sisters, never leave Christ behind. Never take empty trips. You need his presence. We need his, his presence in us. And so, immediately, he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat. But one thing I want to appreciate is the person called Peter. When Peter heard that it was, when he heard the, the, the voice of Jesus speaking, Peter said, if it is you, Lord, let me also come. Let me also come and join you on the water. <laughs> the Bible is very interesting when you read. I wish I had time to explain all that. But the Bible is very interesting that when Peter, God, I mean Jesus said to Peter, please come. Peter came. Brothers and sisters who is listening and watching, I don't mind how long how, the, the, the distance Peter covered on water. But at least according to the reports, Peter is the only human being who has walked on water. Peter walked on water. 
but he walked on water on the strength of Jesus Christ. And so he walked with Jesus Christ and moved. But the wind was still blowing. Interestingly, the wind is still blowing. Even when you are walking with Jesus on water, the wind is still blowing. In other words, when the wind is blowing, don't think Christ is not there. It will blow when he's not around. It may even blow when he's around. But this time, it is safer to blow when he is around. And the Bible says, this wind threatened Peter. He could not move. And then he, he shouted to Jesus Christ and said, some people consider this as the shortest prayer in life. Peter, when he was sinking, said, Lord, save me. That was the, the, the shortest prayer. And God held him by his hand. I mean, Jesus held him by his hand. And they continued to walk on water. And they stepped into the boat. When they stepped into the boat, the Bible says the wind died down. It did not stop. It just died. Because if it stops, then you, there is a possibility of it coming back. But it did not come back. It just died down. And there was calm. Why? The stabilizer had come. Why? The comforter was there. Why? The Lord Almighty was present. Why? What was lacking had now been found. The water cannot mess you up when Christ is there. These problems are not problems. The problem is not the wind. The problem is who is in the boat. When the boat is empty, the wind can toss it anywhere, both left and right, up and down. Everything will be there. Even when the wind is there, you will fear. But when Christ steps into the boat, I'm sure that boat will stabilize. When Christ steps into your family, that family will stabilize. When Christ stepped into your church, that church will, be, will stabilize. When Christ steps into your nation, that nation will stabilize. All we need is that stabilizer called Jesus Christ. Please don't take empty trips. Don't leave Christ alone. When you are taking a trip, call upon him. When you are starting a business, call upon him. When you are leading an institution, call upon him. I mean, call upon him all the time so that he moves with you and you move with him. Brothers and sisters, I love to share the words. But God, God's presence in something gives it stability. God's presence in your, in your life will give you stability of mind. God's presence in your heart will give you the love that your heart needs. Brothers and sisters, don't leave the Lord behind. Come with him, reason like Moses, and move forward. God bless you. God keep you. Let us pray together. Father God, we praise your name. We keep you honored. And in our lives, you are so important. You are the one who can stabilize our boats. You are the only one who, to whom we can anchor. You are the only one who can save us even in the seas. You can save us even in the winds. You have saved us from sin. Here we stand in the name of Jesus, praising you for the words we are sharing. Thank you for this arrangement. Oh Lord, we continue to pray that you give us more opportunities to learn from now.